Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd. Habit to fillah, continue on in our study of the conditions for la ilaha illallah by Hafidh al-Hakami rahmatullahi alayhi wa rahmatun wasiyah. And we mentioned uh, ilm and yaqeen, meaning knowledge and certainty of your testimony uh, testifying or the testimony of faith. That when you take the shahada, you have to have certainty and you have to have knowledge. So knowledge, of course, uh, precedes being certain in something. You can't be certain of something without some sort of knowledge, some sort of ilm of uh, what you're testifying to and uh, what you are going to be certain of. You're only certain when you know something. And so that brings up the third condition that the Imam mentioned and that uh, many of the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah in more contemporary times uh, mentioned these conditions as we know them, as in the seven conditions. Because these conditions, the conditions of La ilaha illallah, they say uh, are istiqra'i, meaning that these conditions are, the ulama have derived these conditions, they have um, deduced these uh, conditions from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the statements of the Salaf. And likewise, when we talk about Tawheed, when we talk about Tawheed and things like this, we don't say that, you know, uh, when we talk about Tawheed having three categories, for example, Tawheed, al uluhiyya wa Tawheed al rububiyya wa Tawheed al asmai wa Sifat, Tawheed of Lordship, rububiyya, Tawheed of uh, uh, Tawheed al ibadah or Tawheed of worship and Tawheed al asmai wa Sifat of the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these as far as categories of Tawheed they weren't mentioned by the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in and, and the early Salaf but later generations of scholars from their looking at the text, looking at the Quran, looking at the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, and looking at the statements of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa tabi'in wa tabi'a tabi'in, then they de derived, they deduced from those texts these conditions. So I hope that that's clear. So we don't say yes that Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala said that there was uh, seven conditions for la ilaha illallah or that there was three categories of Tawheed, but rather they understood Tawheed, and they understood La ilaha illallah and the meaning of La ilaha illallah and what that, uh, and what that required. So, moving on to the third condition of La ilaha illallah, Al-Qabul, or acceptance, that a person accepts the meaning uh, of La ilaha illallah. So the Imam says, acceptance of what this statement necessitates is with the heart, and the tongue. Allah Azza wa Jal narrates to us the news of what preceded regarding those who were previously saved and regarding the punishment of those who rejected and refused to accept this statement. As Allah Ta'ala said, and similarly, we sent not a warner before you to any town, but the luxurious ones amongst them said, we found our, followers, our fathers following a certain way, and religion, and we will indeed follow their footsteps. So this shows us that a lot of times, the people who are, who are wealthy, and this is the sunnah to law, a lot of times people when they have wealth and a lot of material items, they don't use it for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Instead, they use it in a wasteful manner. Instead, they use it to do disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Instead, they use it to put barriers between them and Allah azza wa jal. And so the communities uh, before, meaning before the time of the Prophet وسلم, and during the other NBA, the other Prophets alayhim afdal salatu wasalam, that when they were sent, there were people amongst them who were arrogant, who refused their me message. Meaning they refused the message of Ibrahim and Musa and Daud and all the NBA alayhim afdal salatu wasalam. They refused their message because they had wealth they were arrogant and they said, no, we will follow the religion of our fathers. 
No, we will follow what uh, we will follow the way of our the sunnah of our fathers. We don't know this, so we'll follow them. The Prophet said, "Let the sunnah men kana kablakum." That you will follow the way of those people who came before you, meaning, uh, and this was in regards to shirk, that the people would follow the footsteps of those nations that were destroyed before, meaning the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu uh, Alaihi there will be people from amongst our, our Ummah that would follow the ways of those nations who were destroyed, who went astray, and who were misguided and misguided others. And so, that being the case, that means they didn't have qabul, they didn't have acceptance in their heart of worshiping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, of la ilaha illallah, that there is no God worthy of worship except the law. They didn't accept that. Rather, they stayed upon shirk. Uh, the warner said, even if I bring you better guidance than that which you found your fathers following, they said, verily, we disbelieve in that which you have been sent. So we took ref, uh, revenge of them. Then what was the end of those who denied Islamic monotheism? This is in uh, Surah Zakhraf. Uh, 23 uh, verse uh, 23 to 25 and we'll read it again to make sure that we understand what is the actual ayat the ayat is and similarly we sent not a warner before you to any town but the luxurious ones amongst them meaning the the extravagant ones uh, amongst them said we found our fathers following a certain way in religion and we will indeed follow their footsteps the warner said, even if I bring you better guidance than that which you found your fathers following, they said, verily we disbelieve in that with which you have been sent. So we took revenge of them, then see what was the end of those who denied. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Look at where those people were. They, they're destroyed. Their nations were destroyed for disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not accepting what? Not accepting Tawheed, not accepting the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Allah the Almighty says in Surah Al-Yunus, verse 103, Then in the end we save our messengers and those who believe. Thus it is incumbent upon us to save the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved the believers, those who accepted Tawheed. Those who accept Tawheed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al -Kareem, And indeed we did send messengers before you to their own peoples. They came to them with clear proofs. Then we took vengeance on those who committed crimes, disbelief, setting partners in worship with the law. Uh, the believers, it was incumbent upon us to help them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Rum, verse 47, mentions that He helps and assists the believers. This is the ma'iyatillah. This is the way in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the believers by giving them victory, by helping and supporting them, those people who He truly loves, the mu'mineen, the muhsineen. And they are the maqbuleen. Those are those people who accept Tawheed. They accept the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They accept that in their heart. Because you can say it on your tongue. And everybody says, oh, so-and-so is such a good Muslim. So-and-so is such a good believer. So-and-so, oh, we always see him in the masjid. So-and-so, sister, so-and-so, she always fasts. Mondays and Thursdays. But that kabul is really, it's, it's, it's in the heart and it's on the limbs. You know, it's, it's in your heart, accepting it. Truly, and it's uh, by your practice. That's evidence of what's in the heart. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us that what he promised to those who accept la ilaha illallah of reward and what he has prepared of punishment for those who reject la ilaha illallah. And we mentioned in the prior dars that, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned that that's the haq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on his servants, that they worship him and him alone. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al kareem it will be said to the angels, assemble those who did wrong together with the companions uh, from the devils, and what they used to worship instead of Allah, and lead them on the way of flaming hell. So those people, of course, who commit shirk and die upon shirk are, are uh, deserving of, of the hellfire. Wa'iyadhi billah min dalika. And the shahid, and the main point of these ayat, uh, that the Sheikh is, is mentioning them here is to show that this these people did not have kabul, they did not have acceptance of, uh, of the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their hearts. And Allah says, But stop them, verily they are to be questioned. What is the matter with you? 
Why do you not help one another as you used to do in the world? Meaning they, they can't help themselves in the hereafter. Nay, but that day they shall surrender. And they will turn to one another and question one another. They will say, it was you who used to come to us from the right side. Uh, order polytheism for us and prevent us from the truth. And from every good deed. They will reply, nay, you yourself were not believers. And we had no authority over you. Nay, but you were a transgressing be uh, people. So now the word of our Lord has been justified against us that we shall certainly taste the torment. So we led you astray because you, uh, because we were ourselves astray. Meaning that that's what the people, Ahl nar the people of the hellfire will have this discussion with one another. Then verily that day they will all share in the torment. Certainly that is how we deal with al mujrimin meaning the, the, the wicked criminals and sinners. Truly, when it was said to them, La ilaha illallah, they puffed themselves up with pride. And they said, are we going to abandon our gods for the sake of a man, a mad poet? For the sake of a mad poet? And this is in Surah Al-Safat, verse 22 through 36. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fikitab al-Kareem, made the cause of, and the, uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, made the cause of and the reason for their punishment their arrogance towards la ilaha illallah and their belying of those who came with it so they did not negate what Allah negated and they did not affirm what Allah affirmed, affirmed rather they said rejecting and proudly he has made the gods into one God verily this is a strange thing this is what the polytheists uh, the pagan Arabs said in the time of the Prophet And the leaders among them went about saying, Go on and remain constant to your gods. Verily, this is a thing designed against you. We have not heard of this among the people of these latter days. This is nothing but an invention. This is what the polytheists has said during the time of the Prophet And this is what they said, the pagans, prior to that, when they received the message. And here they said, and are we going to abandon our gods for the sake of a mad poet? Then Allah Azza wa Jal refuted them and turned that back on them uh, through the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, nay, he has come with the truth. And he confirms the messengers before him. Uh, then he said about those before them, except the chosen slaves of Allah, for them there will be a known provision, meaning paradise, fruits, and they shall be honored in the gardens of delight. This is the Makbulin. This is the people who accept the Shahada, who accept the Kalimat al-Tawheed, the Kalimat al-Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitab al-Kareem, whoever brings a good deed will have better than its worth, and they will be safe from the terror on that day. Because hellfire is uh, the, the punishment of hellfire, of course, is a terrible travesty and a test. And the day of judgment also will be a time people will be in terror and fear for what they did. Uh, and in the Sahih, on the authority of Abu Musa, radiallahu ta'ala, I knew that the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, the like of what Allah sent with me uh, uh, of guidance and knowledge is like heavy rainfall, which poured onto the ground. There was some land which was fertile, which absorbed the water, and many plants and grass began to grow. There was some land which was arid, but it held the water, and Allah made the people benefit by it, so they drank from it and used the water and used it for agriculture. There was some other land which was affected by the water, but was flat land, where nothing would grow. It did not hold the water, nor did it allow plants to grow. That is the example of the one who has understanding of the deen and benefits from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent me with. So he learns it and teaches it and the example of he who cannot raise his head due to it and does not accept the guidance of Allah with which I have been sent. This is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the authentic hadith. So Ahabatifillah, it shows us the shahid of this hadith and those ayat is that Ahl Iman, they have qabul and that is a condition for uh, uh, la ilaha illallah, that they accept it in the meaning in their heart. They accept what it entails and what it is of iman, what is what they're responsible for. 
whereas Ahl al-Shirk and Kufr and Zandaka, they refuse uh, 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 Tawheed. And they refuse and are obstinate and arrogant and, and the dunya deceives them to where they uh, leave off and, re and, and, and argue against Tawheed. Because why? They don't accept it in their heart. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.